Hello and welcome to Encased. This is basically inspired by the old Fallout games and from the little I've played so far of it, I can definitely confirm that that is the case. I am very much enjoying this. It is one of those RPGs that you just really, really love. This is currently in early access on Steam and if you would like to check out the game, there is a link in the description. Otherwise, let's start a new game and see what it's all about. You remember how it all started. The year was 1971. The dome was discovered in a remote desert, a gigantic structure of unknown origin. Then, the leading world powers founded the Cronus Corporation with the purpose of researching it. Scientists and other experts were transported inside the dome from Crystal Sands, a city built at its foot. The Spire Station was also built at the top of the mysterious formation, and all the goods and personnel were moving through it to reach the lands beneath the dome. Cronus promised the flourishing of the civilization in its advertising materials, teleportation technology, flying cars, new power sources, the cure for all diseases, maybe even eternal life, who knows? We thought it's our golden ticket, we thought these hospitality open doors led us to the greatest treasury in the universe. And although it was impossible to leave the dome, this subtle warning didn't stop us. Our faith in the better future made us blind. We were looking for new technologies and found millions of strange mechanisms we didn't know how to use. We were searching for immortality, but we lost so many lives. We let the genie out of the bottle, and we had no idea what it will take in exchange for fulfilling our wishes. We were delusional, not seeing the big picture. In September 1976, the day you were delivered from Spire to Magellan Station, the delusions were never stronger. All right, so here we go. After that small prologue and uh, kind of discussing what's going on, we now have the ability to create our own character. And that's exactly what I'm going to try to do. So uh, let's have a look here. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just go for some random stuff. That's literally what I do in all of these things because I don't want to spend too long on the character creation because there are many, many aspects of it. As you can see, one of four. The appearance is only the beginning. So we're going to just... Choose some. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Let me do, let me try and pick something relatively decent. Okay, so let's go for something like this, I guess. Uh, yeah. Okay, features. Okay, we can go for a mustache and a beard. Okay, we're gonna have to go for this, and go for this. Something like that seems decent. Name none. Oh, okay. <laughs> we're probably not gonna have a. Uh, okay. Uh, I have no idea. We'll just go for this, something like this, and we'll just make him a little bit older. Let's make him 32 or something. Okay, so here's the thing. There are different wings, different wings of this place, you know, of the dome, I suppose. We have silver wing, black wing, orange wing, white wing, blue wing, and then silver wing again. So you can see here that silver wing, determine the first priority out of a thousand. Find experts who can suss out the best solutions to every problem. Equip workers with the right tools and ship the necessary materials where they need to go. Every base built and every successful expedition is a testament to the hard work and deep wisdom of Silverwing managers. And the Blackwing guys. Using the most powerful weapons and advanced military equipment, the employees of Blackwing protect humanity from the myriad hazards of the dome. Blackwing's command is made up of the best officers from the most highly trained armies in the world, who coordinate their subordinates to provide maximum security for everyone from every wing under the dome. Then you have orange wing. I'm actually not going to read all of these. I just wanted to give you an example of what the wing each, you know, each wing actually does. So if you want to uh, read this, then by all means pause the video and you can do that. And the same thing with the white wing, and the same thing with the blue wing. And we're going to go with the silver wing because they look pretty snazzy, I got to say. And I'm actually going to just change my portrait here because I think that I really need to get something that's a little bit more in keeping with how my character actually looks. Uh, I don't seem to be able to find something like that, so I guess I'm just going to go for something random. Uh, this scared looking guy, there we go. Looks good to me. 
All right, so now this is where we get through to the statistics screen, which is just your attributes. And we're going to be getting through to something a little bit further in just a second. So you can see here, I'm a heavy charisma build right now. And I think I'm actually going to continue doing something like that because I would like to be able to be good at talking. But I think what I'm going to do is just lower my charisma a little bit so that I can get some more muscle. Because what I would like to do is I would like to be a decent fighter basically I, w I really want to be good at fighting I want to be able to uh, well do hand to hand I think hand to hand would be pretty fun so I'm gonna try and do something like that we'll just lower perception a little bit and just increase our guts some more and now this this is the thing this very well could be the worst thing that I could possibly do but I want to be a talky hand to hand punch in the face kind of guy so that's what we're gonna try and do maybe Maybe it will work, maybe it won't. We'll see. All right, so now we can have tag skills. As you can see, this is what we currently have. And you can add a significant amount by selecting your tag skill here. And then these are actual abilities that you will be able to unlock by tagging those particular skills. So for example, hand to hand. Let's tag it. Boom, there we go. Now we have one two punch. And we can also unlock a variety of other things like hand to hand bonus, stun kick, wrestling stance and kick itself, but you need deafness six for that. So we're just gonna go for one two punch, unlock that for two, two ability points. You can see here that ability points are spent on acquiring special abilities related to a certain skill. And each of these skills actually has a unique amount of ability points. So they're not shared between each other, which is actually really cool in my opinion. Otherwise we have stealth, criminality, speech. Yep, speech is definitely going to be something I will be specking into. So we have now have 42 speech and I can spec into things like charm, which allows you to convince others to grant your requests using personal magnetism. And you also have intimidation, power play without uh, power play, effective and brutal. We're probably going to go for something like that because that is in, in you know, is combined with muscle, which is what we have. We have a lot of muscle. And then otherwise we can use conviction, which is brains. We can also use intimidation level two. We, could, ah, we probably want to get intimidation level two. Why not? Let's, let, let's make a bruiser kind of guy. That seems like a pretty fun idea. And otherwise we have leadership. What does, that, what does leadership actually do? The ability to lead others towards a brighter future, increased wealth, or a painful death? Probably the latter. And then we have piloting. We're actually really good at piloting for some reason. The ability to survive a head-on collision with an enemy vehicle. The ability to drive cars, scooters, motorcycles, and so forth. The ability to run over a living creature on the road without fatal damage to yourself or the car, and so on and so forth. So th these are all really cool abilities, in my opinion. And I think I might want to go for medicine, to be honest. Or survival allows you to carry more useful items. Cookery, the art of cooking. The magical art of turning worthless trash into priceless treasure. Well, maybe not priceless. And then you have dismantling and reconnaissance. Okay, so I'm going to go for medicine because I would like to be able to heal myself. So bandage to stop bleeding and first aid for minor injuries seems good to me. And then otherwise piloting. Well, let's see what we can do here. Uh, is there anything that actually works for me? Uh, not particularly. So I guess I'm just going to go car driving, the ability to drive cars. Yep, seems good, and death proof seems fun, and we'll just go for that. All right, so I think that's basically it. That's basically all I really want to do. I could do something here. Scanning is more efficient and grants you more knowledge points, increases the amount of experience gained for certain accomplishments, and grants you access to password-protected terminals, computers, and computer networks. We probably want to do that, and... Uh, probably increased experience as well. And then we have survival here. Allows you to carry more useful items. Seems good to me. And then we have tech. What does this do? It allows you to create and repair mechanical equipment and the skill of manufacturing and repairing weapons. I'm going to be using hand-to-hand -hand mostly, so I don't know whether I'm actually going to have weapons, but repairing things might actually come in handy at some point. And then we have high-tech weapons. Grants the status of charge to a friendly turret or robot. Yeah, I'm not a, I'm, I don't really care about that too much, so I'm just going to wait with high-tech weapons because I might want to choose something else. So let's continue onward. All right, so this is my overview right here. You can pause the video if you want to take a look at it in detail. Otherwise, let's start the game. You take the envelope handed to you. The Cronus logo stares up at you from it, along with a large number one. You open the envelope. 
Inside, you find a foil-coated postcard depicting a strange glowing mechanism. A second card serves as an official invitation. Do not skip the intro because, well, we want to experience everything the game has to offer. You receive a second envelope. Inside is a copy of the form you filled out earlier. By the way, as far as I'm aware, this game has about 10 hours of content so far, and this is just in early access. And so far, from what I can tell, the experience is extremely polished already. But don't, don't, you know, don't take my word for it. You probably want to check it out yourself at some point along its development cycle. Anyway, the third envelope contains another congratulatory postcard and a ticket to Crystal Sands. This is the town of Crystal Sands, an explorer's last stop before they enter the dome. The authority of the committee is hardly felt here, but there is nothing strange in it. Everyone who wanted to really command and rule, they are all there, beyond the flickering edge in the sky. Michael Airwood, the smiling boy from the cover of Zeit six years ago, he was the talk of the town. At 20, he became co-owner of Horizon INR and took the company to the top of the arms market. Few remember him now. These days, Zeit features Cronus staff, who make Horizon's best look like ants. Cronus grows far too fast, outpacing all its competitors. And its management division, known as the Silver Wing, is looking to hire people just like you, high flyers raring to become the new Michael Airwood. This is no corporate ladder, this is an elevator. The glass door is closed behind you, and the funicular carries you to the spire. A gentle wind rocks the crowded cabin. At the handrail, your view of the city is obscured by the rising heat. The funicular rises on. Frost whitens the windows. Its script, pale upon the glass. The cabin heating comes on. All right, so now what we can do is we can inspect the posters in the cabin, or we can look in the window. Let's look in the window. Clinging to the handrail, you peer through the frosted glass. The cabin emerges from milk-white clouds. The sunlight reflects bright upon the roof of the dome. You shield your eyes. The spire approaches. A moment, and the cabin shudders and docks. And you can actually mouse over the text that is in white, so you can see a little brief description about it, which is actually really cool as well, in my opinion. The spire. Se steady white light floods the station hallways. You feel like you're in outer space, or at a busy shopping mall. The clerk at the desk gives you a friendly nod and passes you the fourth envelope, fourth and last. Inside you find your name tag, permanent pass, and a magnetic chip no, bi no bigger than an aspirin. On the chip you find engraved the number 38. At capsule 38 you put the chip in the slot. The door opens. You step inside. Five others have arrived before you. You give them a wave before taking a seat. The round door closes with a dull clap. The capsule begins its descent, accelerating slowly. All right, so now we can have a look at everyone or no one, and we can just look through the viewport. I suppose we will just start from the top. Watch the female white wing employee. A young woman. Her tag reads, Tomoko Kimura. She catches your reflection in the glass and turns. There was an article in Subverse about light emitting minerals with changeable crystalline grids. Quietly, she answers the question you didn't get the chance to ask. I'm here for them. Oh, interesting, interesting. I, I really like how they have changed the font as well, so it actually indicates someone speaking. I think that's a great thing for an RPG. Greet the Blue Wing employee. The Russian squeezes your fingers in his own. Gesturing to the window, he points at the lattice of unfinished aqueducts, standing tall and stiff in the sand. Then he pats himself on the chest. Looks like he doesn't speak English. Check out the silver. Monty James. The silver puts one hand on his, on his chest and with the other playfully salutes you. He nods at your name tag. I've read your profile. All right, well, thanks. Good, good work. Good work, Monty. Greet the female Blackwing employee. Lieutenant Elsa Olafsson. The black introduces herself. She puts a hand on the shoulder of the orange sitting beside her. And this is my first assignment. Check out the orange wing employee. The man in the orange jumpsuit pretends not to notice you. Eyes lowered, he studies his own thin wrists and the handcuffs that bind them. Look through the viewport. You move to the window beneath the rippling clouds. You spy a golden desert. Pretty as an advertisement, the dunes ripple in pale waves. You think you see patterns. You squint. You were right. 
gigantic concentric circles seem to stain the sand. There are hundreds of enigmatic machines and unexplored buildings scattered over thousands of square kilometers under the dome. The functions of most of them remain unknown. Those currently being studied are cataloged as objects. The capsule sinks into the clouds. The silver knocks on the viewport. Attention, ladies and gentlemen, these are your last moments in your old world. I advise you to enjoy them. The cabin quivers as if breaking through an invisible barrier. The black lets out a barely audible breath. That's the boundary. There's no going back now. The dome is characterized by its selective permeability. Cargo and personnel are moved inside through the gap at the apex of the dome. Damaged equipment, dangerous waste, and relics exit the dome this way as well. As for living beings, any attempt to leave the dome ends in death. The trip here is a one-way ticket, but that doesn't stop the daredevils. The ground comes up fast. The capsule hits the braking cushions. The door opens to the desert, flooded with sunlight. An orange transporter stands nearby. The silver adjusts his jumpsuit and narrows his eyes. Attention, you are now entering Cronus territory. Mr. Patanin, Ms. Kimura, please follow me and pick your seats. Mr. Bisley looks uncomfortable. Elsa, would you be so kind as to provide him with handcuffs that are more humane? The orange smiles bitterly as he takes his seat at the back of the transporter near the barred window. His humane handcuffs softly shine. The vehicle begins to move. The world under the dome looks like a dream, a great and glorious dream. The transporter pulls out onto a brand new road with freshly painted yellow-white markings. The faraway horizon glows blue-silver as the light glints on the edges of the dome. All right, so we can look left. We can look right, or we can sit back. I guess we'll look left. You peer into the distance. Stations, vehicles, antennae. A gigantic construction site. Solar batteries spread their petals under the sun. Compared with this, Crystal Sands is no more than a dusty mirage. The car turns off the street down into an underground parking lot. The silver opens the door, and the car is bathed in the yellow light of dozens of lamps. In the far corner of the lot, a spacious elevator awaits you doors open. The lift's powerful engine suddenly falls silent and the platform stops. The hollow echo of voices is coming from below. The lamps in the wall fixtures are buzzing quietly. The soft rumble of distant mechanisms comes from behind the ventilation hatch. And here we are. So this is basically us entering the game after that very lengthy introduction. But it wouldn't be a an epic RPG if that was not the case, would it? Anyway. Let's have a look here. All right, so I'm just gonna, oh, so they, yep, they have a quick save. That's actually really, really fantastic as well. Love games with quick save, Fallout New Vegas, reminding me of all that. And uh, we've got some more notifications here. Wow, we have a huge amount of notifications, as you can see. That's kind of crazy. And uh, we can actually move around. As you can see, look at this, this is me. This is my guy. This is my guy right here. So what we can do is we can uh, exit through there. Now I have strike, hand to hand, strike an enemy with your melee weapon. Uh, with your melee weapon? Well, I don't actually have a melee weapon. Oh, well, never mind. One, two punch. That is going to... Oh, I actually don't have a melee weapon. That is really bad. I should have actually specced into light weapons, shouldn't I? Oh, well, never mind. I guess I can do that as I level up. If I level up and don't die immediately. Ah, hello there. Okay, uh, Derek Exler is right there. All right, so what is this? Oh, I can actually give feedback. So I can actually literally just click on this little mail icon right here, and then I can send a bug report or a performance issue or a suggestion to the developers themselves. I think that's a fantastic addition as well. Anyway, let's move on. Let's move over here and see what he has to say. Hello, I'd like to talk with you. The stranger bounces back and turns his flashlight on you. Herman, what the? Hey, who the hell are you? All right, so I'm actually going to... Uh, uh, I'm gonna politely ask if he can. No, I'm actually gonna say, ask him if he knows why the elevator stopped. The the technician looks uncertain. Well, uh, this is a planned stoppage. Just wanted to check something. I think that he is not who he says he is. Tell him he's acting strangely, and you're going to call security. He's going to attack me if if I do that, isn't he? Politely ask if he can repair the elevator. The blue looks at you for a long time. Okay, get on the elevator and I'll send you on your way. The technician thinks for a couple of seconds. 
I'm going to switch the electricity on now. The elevator will move as soon as you reach the... The pile of cases behind him collapses with a crash. One of the containers falls open, and a small glowing part bounces out onto the floor. The blue stares helplessly at the part, then back at you. I didn't take them. It was Herman. Yes, Herman is the thief. Ah, fuck it. The blue pulls a monkey wrench from his belt and takes a step towards you. All right, it seems like we're going to be fighting him then, by the looks of things. All right, so I guess I'm just going to strike him. We have a hit chance of 57%. Mm, let me see. Is there anything else I can do? You can smash a door, force a jammed lever, kick a malfunctioning engine to life. Brute force can turn any situation around. So you can do that. Toss a metal belt to check for hidden traps or anomalies. So you can do that as well, if you so desire. All right, so, uh, hmm. I guess I'll just do this. Oh, nice. Good amount of damage. Good amount of damage. He's almost dead, actually. He is actually almost dead. Do you think I can actually do one more strike? And he's down. He is down. Nice. Oh, well, actually, we killed him with our fists. That's kind of that's kind of brutal, isn't it? All right, well, there you go. He was a bad guy by the looks of things, though. All right, so he has a bunch of stuff. Official Cronus currency used everywhere under the dome. Third letter from Cronus, a yellow envelope, thick and crisp. Inside is a solemn letter printed in a font that mimics real handwriting. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, we have one of those as well. And there's an electronic key for doors within Cronus facilities. Insert in the receiver mounted on the door frame, and the system will verify your access. Okay, well, I'm just going to take all, which is, by default, F. Actually, that's mine. I am an idiot. Yes. Don't... I am an absolute idiot. At least I at least I actually realized that I was looking at this now, I guess. <laughs> I am an idiot. Don't just just ignore that. Ignore that 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 happened. Anyway, this is a letter to Derek who we've just killed. Dear Mr. Exler, we received your latest money transfer the other day. My dear friend, for the umpteenth time, I can think of no words to fully express our speaking on behalf of the team and our young patients at the hospital, gratitude to you. You will find this past month's expense report attached, together with a postcard from Marticia. When we told her about your charitable donations to our hospital, she was excited for the chance to draw you. Great work, isn't it? Thank you again for your kindness. Dr. Kurt Rudel. Oh dear, I just killed a nice man by the looks of things. That is not very good, but he he attacked me. What was I supposed to do? Just leave him, I guess? I, I guess just leave him. Oh well. Never mind. I, I guess we can't really do much about that. Can I uh, she sheath my weapon? Because I'm I'm currently in combat mode like all the time now. By the looks of things, let, let me just loot this. Broken scissors, wooden bar. I guess I'm just going to loot everything I can for the moment. Oh, here's a notebook. Duty roster. Ah, so Stephen and Martin are the technicians here, and then Derek and Herman are also then uh, a part of team two. Please do not forget to file an approved duty roster in advance. Okay, well that's good to know. Uh, and look at that, you can actually look at yourself as well by doing this. Uh, you can use the elevator console too. Is there anything else that I can actually... Oh, look at this, there's actually this that I can search too. That's a relic case. A black pin. It looks blue most of the time, but sometimes flashes with unnaturally bright colors, mainly red and green. Has a beneficial effect on the owner's physical condition. And I will be taking that. Thank you. And I would like to be able to use it. Equip it. There we go. Nice. Look at that. We already have a relic. Very nice indeed. Okay. Happy with that. And uh, let's see. What else is this? The electric motor that powers the elevator. Okay. So let's see what's going on here with the elevator console. Right. Okay. Oh, there we go. I, I apparently turned it on. I apparently turned it on. That's good. And there's a notebook. The ventilation system hatch. A square hatch with big latch locks. Okay. Well, that's not going to do much for me right now. And I suppose the elevator is now working, so I will be able to go back into the elevator. Or back back into an elevator, because I didn't have an elevator before. Oh, I could have just killed him by doing this. Aha, uh -huh. yes, I could have literally just killed him by doing this. So that just shows that there are varieties of ways to deal with situations. You, you don't have to just go like fisticuffs in the face with the guy. So you could theoretically kill him that way, which would be... Probably uh, advantageous for someone that is not a combat build. Anyway, we have a med pack here, and we have some Agilone capsules. 
A steroid drug with mixed effects provokes short-term rush of blood to the muscles, increasing stamina, reaction rate, and overall body tone. Caution, there are contraindications. Do not use during the recovery period. Okay, well, I'm just gonna take all then. And is there anything else here? We can search. We've got some electrical equipment. Wow, with a, that's a big value. Yeah, that's, a, that's some nice value. These broken relics have lost their primary function, but may still prove useful. Nice. Okay, so where is the elevator? Where is the elevator, actually? Because I am not really seeing it at the moment. I, d I mean, I turned it on, right? Yeah, I think I turned it on. So I think I can just go back, can't I? I think I can just go back through here. And did I search here? Yeah, I already searched there. Okay. So let's go back through the vent. Because I would assume that that has now allowed us to use the elevator. Yes, it has. There we go. All right. So now let's use that. Visitors to Magellan Station will find a hospital welcome in a large, luminous hall. Everything within has been designed to make our recruits comfortable while waiting for registration. Polite and affable personnel, cozy chairs and couches, a vending machine, and of course, some colorful and engaging informational material about our organization and life under the dome. Please note, the vending machine only accepts combons, the currency of the dome. There we go. That's, that's just the leaflet. Okay, so there we have it. We have now arrived in Magellan Station. Please come to the desk. I'll register you. Oh, okay. A tall receptionist watches you from behind his desk with a bored, haughty look. He gestures impatiently for you to come closer. Noticing your silver uniform, he offers up his best artificial smile. Welcome! My name's Dean Rayhead. It's my job to help our new employees settle in. Please take a seat while I register you. The administrator slaps himself on the forehead as if he has just remembered something. Oh, I almost forgot. The regulation greeting before registration. Just a second. Uh, I could interrupt him or listen to the greeting. I think I would like to listen to the greeting. I think that would be quite funny. Rayhead takes a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder from under the desk, quickly rewinds the tape to the beginning, and presses play. The speakers explode with a crackling sound over which the sound of a metronome grows louder. Solemn music begins playing from the tape recorder. The administrator's face takes on a serious expression. Dear employee, I, Administrator Dean Rayhead, welcome you under the dome on behalf of the Cronus Corporation. The administrator coughs and continues. By joining our company, you are choosing the path of science and progress. You are among mankind's best, and we ask that you live up to this title. Dean looks a squint at the monitor. Deserve this title. Do your job honestly, obey the law, respect your colleagues, and... The music fades, and the administrator finishes speaking his last words in silence. And together we will build the best future for all of mankind. Dean puts the tape recorder away. We're done with the greeting, now I'll register you and upgrade your Selectron. Are you ready? Okay, I have no idea what Selectron is. What is this? Ah, electric key card. Okay. So, <laughs> I could actually tell him about the man that attacked us. Shall we do that? Let's do it. The administrator listens to you with studied attention. When you finish your tale, he points in the direction of the hall. I'm sorry, but I'm not responsible for the security. Talk to Indra, let him deal with it, and... The receptionist raises his tired and indifferent gaze at you. Just a piece of advice. You'd better not to you are better not to tell that it happened to you in the elevator operating room or the shaft. Actually, you ought to compose a detention slip explaining what you were doing in the restricted territory for the personnel with special clearance level only. Maybe you'll even be given a fine. Oh dear. Uh ask him whether he is intending to do anything. Dean ra rises a bit from his seat. Do anything? Yes, of course. Dear employee, on behalf of the Cronus Corporation, I sincerely apologize for this incident. We will do our best to provide the proper level of security in the future. He sits back down, looking like he has just fulfilled the greatest deed in his life. All right, so say you're ready and begin. You move closer to the desk. Dean's hands freeze above the keyboard. The administrator gives you a nod. Okay, so pass him a note. Enter your data into the terminal yourself. Right, so I guess we'll just enter our data for uh, ourselves. You squeeze through the narrow window, bend over the reception desk, and type your data into the database. After hitting proceed, you return to your seat. Dean is muttering something under his breath as he returns to the terminal, clearly displeased. Now here's the thing. 
I actually thought that this was going to give me a uh, selection of sorts, a, an RPG selection of sorts, and I didn't really want to have something mess it up, so I kind of wanted to do it myself, but apparently that doesn't really matter. All right, Ray Hatch scans the computer screen. So, you're on the staff at the Magellan Station. Your selectron, please. I'll update the firmware. Dean presses the docking port of your pass to a recess in the casing of his computer. The administrator returns your selectron. So, colleague, you have the first clearance level, which gives you access to the archives of the administrative level, the warehouses, and to be honest, basically everywhere except the entirely classified locations. Yes, it also gives you administrative privileges at most terminals. Dean continues. Each new employee has several mandatory tasks to perform. I can tell you about each one briefly or in detail. Ah, uh, I would be satisfied with the short version, I think. Rayhead snorts. Hmm. To make it short, get your uniform from the storage, get your weapon in the armory, complete training at the training ground, learn how to use the scanner, avoid anomalies, and obtain scientific knowledge on the white wing level. After this, return to me and I'll tell you what you need to do next. Dean sits back in his armchair. That's all. I hope there won't be any questions. Uh, I have no more questions. Rayhead claps his hands in satisfaction. Great, I'll be waiting for you. He reaches for the tape recorder, but at the last moment thinks better of it. The instructions call for some welcoming words, but dash it all, that's nonsense. Welcome to Magellan. Move away. All right. <laughs> uh, that, uh, that was a pretty interesting... Uh, encounter. And there's Monty James once again. Ah, oh, maybe I should actually speak to him. A silver-wearing thin glittering glasses sits on an orange couch, trifling, trifling nervously with his badge with the name Monty James on it. There is a packed capacious suitcase and the leaflet above uh, or about the dome are atop it. He raises his head, scans your face, screwing up his eyes. Ah, it's you. How do you like it inside the dome? So that you haven't formed any opinion yet, and it's still not the time to discuss your impressions. Uh, yeah, probably that. Monty stares sorrowfully at his suitcase. My impression is not too positive meanwhile. They forgot to add me into the lists. Can you imagine? Say that you could try to register him with the terminal. Toying absentmindedly with his hangnail, Monty raises his head. Are you for real? That would be incredibly nice of you. Maybe then my illusions about this place and the people working here will be justified. The silver evidently cheers up. Right, so here's the thing. He's not on the list, which may mean that he is some kind of spy or something like that. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> let's speak to Dean again. All right. Uh, oh, no, no. Apparently that's uh, maybe. Uh, oh, maybe I can just use the terminal. What are you doing? Stop. Uh, okay, so apparently I can't use the terminal myself. Huh, interesting. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at our quests then. This is our quest log right here. And uh, this is our story. Side quests against all protocols. Okay, so if I, yeah, via computer terminal. So let's just track this for the moment. And I actually wonder where a computer terminal, is that a computer? No, that's a drinking, uh, drinking thing. Is that a, ah, there we go. There's a public terminal. Okay, so I can probably do that. Ah, the Kronos logo flickers pale blue on the terminal display. Okay, so let's register Monty James then. As you feed Monty James's data into the system, you notice that the registration form for the Silvers looks too detailed. Obviously, the Kronos sees its managers as a special cast. The data entered and checked, you press the send button. With a beep, the system redirects you to the terminal main menu. Right, well there you go. It seems like I have completed this. Let's log in. Right, so we can actually have a look-see at all of our stuff here. So we can actually have a look at our mail, our news, statistics, and indeed log out. Our employee status. Employee status is clearance level one, and so on and so forth. These are our actions that we must now complete. Receive uniform and weapons, complete military training, and so on. Right, okay, well that's absolutely fine. So let's just continue on with then. And we'll go and tell Monty that he has now been... Uh, now being registered. Tell Monty that you have added him to the lists. Monty takes off his glasses, puts them on the couch cushion, and all of a sudden, he hugs you. He puts his glasses back on. 
I thank you for such a fabulous example of cooperation with a stranger. Perhaps the dome really is a special place. And move away, I guess. All right, so uh, yeah, there you go. We actually did complete that, amazingly enough. I don't know whether we got any experience for it, but uh, maybe it's okay. Okay, so what we want to do now, we need to wear a uniform. So we will find him on floor two. So I guess we will just track that, even though tracking, I have no idea whether that makes any difference. But let's go over to the elevator and go to level two. And we'll see what's going on. Floor level minus two. All right, so I need to go and speak to... Who do I need to speak to again? Uh, not Jack. I don't think I need to speak to Jack. Who do I need to speak to? I need to speak to Calvin. Calvin, 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 Calvin. Where is Mr. Calvin? Well, he's not, it's not gonna be Mr. Calvin, is it? Is that him? No, that's Fyodor. Ah, there's Calvin, fantastic. Gonna speak to him. Storekeeper Calvin McPherson is leaning against the shelf, looking bored. He perks up when he sees you and raises his hand for a high five. <laughs> Give him a high five, yes, we have to. He returned the gesture with a satisfying slap on Calvin's outstretched hand. The storekeeper gives you a thumbs up. You're my kind of person. Okay, now let's get, to, let's get down to business. Yeah, if, if I could speak properly, uh, that's great. Okay, anyway, ask Calvin to barter with you, say that you came for the equipment, ask about a souvenir, blurt out a joke. Okay, well, let's just say that you came for the equipment. Calvin probingly eyes your jumpsuit. I mean, you don't look like you're ready for the desert, let me explain. Calvin solemnly gestures at the package on the table. According to the rules, I should give you a short briefing, but technically, it is optional. Uh, I'm, I'm ready to hear the briefing, why not? McPherson assumes a lecturer's pose. A basic field kit and uniform is issued to employees every two years. If any part of the kit is defective or gets damaged for reasons beyond the employee's control, the company will pay for a replacement. McPherson opens the package. Introducing the silver wing kit, ta-da! So what do we have here? A silvery white jacket, shoes, skirt or pants, depending on gender, a black shirt, and a skinny necktie. According to the rules, it should be tied with a Windsor knot. That's how I do things. Calvin cranes his neck to show off his tie. Calvin returns the items to the package and hands it to you. Ah, uh, what else? Ah, uh, yes. They don't give out weapons in the warehouse. Go to the armory on level three. And another thing. He rests his hands on the package. Gloves and headgear are not included, but I strongly recommend purchasing those. Then you'll have adequate protection from dust, sunlight, radiation, and other hazards. Where would one make such a purchase? Why, right here, of course, from me. Right, okay, yeah, I'm actually gonna, I'm, go I'm gonna buy some, uh, gonna buy some gloves and headgear. Do I have enough money? <laughs> do I have enough money to do that? I have no idea, but I guess uh, I have 40. I have 40, so I should be able to buy some gloves. Or maybe not, because apparently this is literally like 40, just straight up. I could sell some electrical equipment to him, though. Uh, he has, wow, he has 900. Okay, he has a lot. Okay, so I will swap this with him. There we go. Oh, we're going to get, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to get super kitted out right here. Also, backpacks. Backpacks are a thing in this game, as you can see. Simple backpack with thick, coarse fabric. Puffy shoulder straps and several spacious compartments. This backpack has all the necessities, but none of the extras. And you can also buy that as well, which is a capacious backpack. It gives you encumbrance, encumbrance 150% increase. So that's really nice. Uh, teleglasses. I should probably go for a uh, respirator, shouldn't I? Uh, yeah, I should go for a respirator. So let's go for that. And we should probably get some of these. I want defense class high. I really want a high defense. For the most part. Uh, what about a belt? A belt might actually make sense. So I'll buy a belt too. Unless I already have a belt. I don't think I already have a belt. So I'm going to be taking a belt too. And what else do we have here? Engineer gloves. High capacity power cell. Work gloves. Hmm. Mm, nah, I'm, I'm pretty good with the work gloves, actually. I think I'm going to take the work gloves. So let's take those. Okay, so that's 130, and that is fine. I technically could sell this to him as well, but I'm not entirely sure whether they are going to be useful as we go forward. So it might very well be good. Scissors are, scissors are a useful tool. You can make a shift, probe, or a lockpick out of them. Oh, wow, that's actually really cool. Okay, yeah, so I don't think I'm going to sell anything else because it just doesn't seem worth it. Uh, common material. No, that's absolutely fine. So I'm just going to accept that. There we go. 
All right, thanks very much, Calvin. Thank you. <laughs> all right, so let's let's put all of this on. Oh yeah, we're looking we're looking snazzy. We're looking snazzy already, and I look like <laughs> I look like I'm gonna murder someone very soon by the looks of things. Okay, well there you go. We're actually looking pretty nice, I guess. And we're now done here. So that means that I will now be able to go to get my uh, get my weapons. Oh, loud banging on the door. What's going on there? Oh, you know what? I want to go and I want to go and see. Hey, open up. All right. Should should I should I go and help him? I should I should go and help him and open this up. Use door. Okay, I'm gonna try and do that. Where's my guy? Where? Oh, there he is. There he is. Run, run, help the guy. He might he might be in trouble. Oh, it seems like oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna open this and see if we can help him out. Can I? Oh, no path there. Ah, here we go. I see. There's a, an event here. Dull thumps can be heard from behind the gates. The technician at the terminal pulls off his headphones and scans the area uneasily. Give me a break. I told you not to hammer on the door. It's a vehicle entrance. Instead of an answer, a heavy, angry blow and an incomprehensible shout come from behind the gate. Mmm. We're going to order the blue to open the door. The technician refuses. No way, forget it. The gate is automatic and it's solid, reliable equipment. More importantly, if I bypass the program and open it, it'll cause a malfunction. He shakes his head in irritation. The officer, who's facing a parapet above the loading dock, stops and listens intently. I recognize that voice. Open the gate. That's Kepler. He went out on a mission this morning, a couple of hours before the storm warning. Did you hear me? Open that bloody door. The technician looks up at the Blackwing officer with extreme displeasure. I don't know about Kepler, but even if Joseph and the Holy Virgin herself were knocking, that door is automatic. What am I supposed to do? Break open the panel? Knock out the fuse and pray that it will spring open? And anyway, you're not from my department. Where the hell do you get off ordering me around? Alright, so technically we could order him, because we are a silver wing. And that's the reason why you want to, you know, think a little bit about uh, what kind of wing you're going to come from. And we are almost muscle nine. That's actually kind of annoying that I'm not muscle nine yet, but we're going to just use our silver wing to order him, to order him to open the gate. As a silver wing employee, you have the authority to issue these kinds of orders. The blue grimaces in frustration, but nods reluctantly. Okay, but remember, I'm the one who has to answer for it. The technician looks at you and Moreau again. He sighs, lifts up a panel, pulls out a fuse from amidst the mess of cables inside, and presses a button. Rumbling and scraping, the massive door begins to shift upward. By the strobe of flashing scarlet lights, you see two huge figures in black wing servo shell. One of the fighters is wounded, and the second is lugging him along with great effort. Duty officer, dispatcher, code 21, code 21, get a doctor's. Having dragged the wounded man to the garage, the fighter props him up by a wall and falls down exhausted nearby. A doctor, stat. The chest plate of his armor is covered with a thick layer of desert dust, but the surname Kepler, stamped on one side, is still readable. He tears off his helmet and hangs his sweaty head under the stream of cold air, flowing out of the air conditioner. You shift your gaze to the wounded man. His crushed, lacerated armor is covered in blood and hydraulic fluid. There are no bullet holes, but judging from the ab abundance of blood, this soldier is at death's door. Any kind of unskilled interference may well kill him. All right, so here we go. I actually do have, <laughs> I do actually have first aid. Uh, and we can use med packs as well, so I guess I'll give him first aid. Having loosened the armor, you quickly stop the bleeding. That the wounded man is still conscious tells you your efforts were successful. You don't have to wait long. A few minutes later, an old, thin fellow in a white lab coat appears in the warehouse, accompanied by two gloomy-looking oranges and a technician. The blue deals with the armor's locks easily. After evaluating the victim's status, the doctor injects a few cc's of painkiller into him and steps aside to let the oranges through. The silent attendants load Holiday onto a gurney and roll him away. The doctor and technician leave shortly thereafter. Only you and Kepler are left standing beside the ruined servo shell. Right, so we gained some Blackwing reputation, and uh, we've done a good. We did. We did a good thing. We did a good thing. So uh, let's actually go and speak to uh, Mr. Kepler. Kepler stands by the lacerated armor, staring vacantly into space. When you greet him, he turns and nods dully. Is Holiday gonna be fine? He asks absentmindedly, addressing no one in particular. Ask about the circumstances, ask him what he can tell you. I guess I'm just going to ask him about the circumstances. 
Kepler's expression grows serious. We signed an agreement. What happened there remains there. No discussing it. All right, ah, mm hmm Okay, so this is where if you had specced into conviction, which I'd probably recommend at this point, and by the way, if you heard any creaking in the background, that's my chair. But anyway, the point is, is if I had specced into conviction or any of those persuasion-based skills, then I would have been able to convince him at this, uh, at this point. Or if I was a Blackwing, then I'd be able to do that. But unfortunately, I won't be able to. Uh, ask him what he can tell you about Holiday, I suppose. For a moment, a smile creases Kepler's stern face. He loves wacky jokes and pizza. He scored high on all his training metrics, but discipline is lax. Sometimes Charlie acts like a complete imbecile, but I couldn't care less. He's the best. I'd give my life for that dumbass, he adds. Right, okay, well, there you go. Um, those guys are obviously the, the warriors of the, uh, uh, you know, of the dome, I suppose, the security forces. And uh, we're going to continue onward. We're going to continue onward to the elevator and hopefully get our weapon. But, uh, yeah, pretty interesting so far to uh, see all of the different options and things. And that, <laughs> I actually saw someone, I actually saw someone say about this game specifically that they've already completed it and that they would want to play it again straight away. And that's exactly the reason, because you're able to do these things, you're able to in you know, interact with all of these different people, different places, and uh, different mechanisms, and sometimes you're not going to be able to do anything with those things, because you're not going to have the required skills with your current build, which is what we saw there with me. But, if you were to start a new game, and, uh, you know, maybe play with a different build, or maybe play as a Blackwing, or play as something else, then you might very well have something, uh, something, definitely something else to uh, have some fun with, because I would have liked to have known what actually happened there, but apparently I'm, I'm not going to be able to, uh, not going to be able to find out just yet. All right, so let's see, well, who, who do I need to find here again? I need to find, wow, there's some turrets and all kinds of things going on here. I think I need to find... Everyone has a name. Oh, look, there's 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 Mr. Kepler. He's right there. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, well, I'm actually going to go and just speak Winston. Winston. Is that him? Mm, I'm I'm not entirely sure how I'm supposed to find him, but I guess I just have to look around and see whether I can. I'm kind of I'm kind of surprised that we haven't really found him yet. Okay, so it beeps. Okay, well that's fine. Huh. Well, where where is he? There's a, a drinks vending machine right there. I, am I in the right place? Where's the armory? I should really go to where the armory is because I think I can probably figure out where the armory is, right? From from the uh, environment, perhaps. There's Winston. Fantastic. Of course he's sitting down. Ah. Hello, Winston. Help me out. A middle-aged black is sitting on a bench with his hands on his knees. His shoes are freshly polished, the buttons on his uniform twinkle in the light, and even his badge, which reads Winston Botherby, instructor, is so shiny that it hurts your eyes. Botherby frowns as you approach. You begin by being late for the briefing? Are you going to be late for your funeral as well? Say that you wish to receive military training. Snap to attention and report that you're here on assignment and ready to receive instruction. I'm going to snap to attention because he seems like that kind of guy. Botherby pats his holster. No, you don't want it. If you wanted it, you would have arrived with your weapon. Go back to the armory and get your equipment. Uh, bark, yes, sir. And move away. Ooh, I thought, what? Wait, wait, how am I supposed to get my... Uh... Wait, am I going the wrong way? This is the instructor. Wait a minute, then. Where do I, uh, where do I actually have to go for, for my, uh, for my stuff then? Military training, collect your field uniform. Huh. Well, where's the armory then? Because I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss. <laughs> I am completely at a loss then. Wait a minute. Deputy. Oh, there's the armory. There's the armory. Okay. So yeah, you've got to use your, uh, you've got to use your brain in this game. And it's very difficult for me to use my brain. As we all know. Anyway, a heavily armored Blackwing soldier is watching over the warehouse's security door. His face above the chin is obscured behind the smoky gray of a hardened glass visor. According to the metal plate on his chest, the soldier's name is Gunther Haas. Okay. 
I'm going to use Silverwing. Ask where you can get armor like his. Haas chuckles. It's unavailable outside Blackwing. Ask why a soldier in combat gear is needed to guard the warehouse. Haas shakes his head. That information is privileged. Blackwing employees only. Ooh, they seem they seem really they seem really shady, don't they? They seem really shady. I would like to get into the door, please. Can I? I mean, this is the armory. Oh, wait a minute. I ah, oh, yeah, mm, never mind. I just need to speak to her. I am an idiot. Ah, oh, I am an idiot. Okay, well, yeah. Let's just speak to her. The smell of good tobacco wafts off this tall, plump woman from a meter away. On the counter in front of her is a black lacquered pipe, an open ledger with numerous signatures and a metal flip calendar. Nearby, a nameplate reads, Margarita Tuchenko. The woman smooths her copper red hair and casually lights her pipe. What can I do for you? Her voice is gravelly and thick as tar. Ask for a personal weapon. Having heard your request, Margarita thumbs her notebook a couple of pages back. I see, the first time receiving. She moves silently over to the shelves. Tuchenko returns after a couple of minutes holding a small pistol. She puts it on the counter and strokes the Bakelite grip with a strange delicacy. This is standard issue for blues and silvers. I don't know why they called it Raven. It wasn't me, so they did. The black loudly draws the slide, pops the magazine with an almost imperceptible movement and slams it back into place. A reliable one. Its weight is significant, so even if it doesn't shoot, you can always crack them on the head with it. Tachenko pushes the pistol across the counter to you. Okay, so I am going to say that I... Uh, take the weapon carefully, keeping the barrel down like you were trained. Say you're no good with light weapons and you need something else. Uh, that's the thing. I actually do need something else. I need like a, uh, a melee weapon of some kind. Yeah, I need a melee weapon. There you go. Tachenko gives you an interested look, puffing her pipe. As we say, the master is the ruler. Though actually, it's rare that someone would change a gun for something more simple. But why? It's up to you. Margarita disappears into the back of the armory. The black returns in a couple of minutes and puts a large baton with an, electri an electricity shock on its end. She presses a button on the device, and a blue arc flickers between the contact elements. Like it? Use it carefully and don't forget to charge it. This shit runs out of energy very quickly. Alright, ask about servicing the weapon. Keep the electrodes clean, that's all I have to say. Well, what about the weapon's drawbacks? This, this thing has one drawback, it doesn't shoot. Uh, fantastic, yeah. Okay, also... There's one other thing. The battery is somewhat dopey, but there aren't any disposables, so an AC outlet is your best friend. And don't abuse the damn thing, it's not a club. Leaning out of the armory window, the black points somewhere off to one side. Now it's time for your briefing. Look for the big gate. Bother B is already waiting for you, just so you know. He's a little crazy, but a good man, nonetheless. Alright, so let's go and speak to Winston again. He's obviously going to be super pleased that I now have a weapon, even though I can't use it, because as you can see, I actually only have 55 in melee weapons and not what I actually need. I am really bad at making characters, as you can no doubt tell. So where, where, what, what is my, uh, what is my actual, wait a minute. Can I, ah, here we go, here we go. Okay, uh, melee, melee, where's, where's melee? Oh, there, 37, I don't have any skill, oh, I am an idiot, I should have done this instead of hand to hand, but I suppose hand to hand means that I don't actually need a weapon. So I guess we'll be okay one way or another. All right, he stops as he notices you. The black glances at you. Yes, I see you came here with your weapon, ready to disappoint me. Aren't you ready, employee? Say that you're ready. Brother B steps aside, making a path to the doors. Take this elevator to the training grounds. He raises his index finger. The conditions on the training ground are close to what one would see in reality. Your goal is to avoid getting lost and dying of dehydration, and try not to aim the gun barrel at yourself when shooting. I, I don't actually have a gun, sir. Anyway, pulling a notepad from his pocket, the instructor jots down your name. Your goal is to hit three targets. I'm going to watch and advise as necessary. Try not to burst into tears, that's all. Go ahead. <laughs> Salute and move away. Okay, there we go. Uh, interesting. Okay, so there's the training ground, and I suppose that's actually going to be it for this episode. If you would like to see more of Encased, then by all means let me know, because I would be more than happy to play some more. I love this game already. And if you would like to check out the game yourself, and maybe even purchase it, there is a link in the description. Otherwise, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.